Welcome into Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts with CPA and Personal Financial Specialist, Phil Putney. Now let's get rolling with today's show. Hey everybody, welcome into Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts with Mark and Phil here to talk investing, finance, retirement as we usually do. But we're also going to spend some time this week. Phil, we're going to change it up a little bit and get kind of counterintuitive uh, I want to talk about maybe controversial, maybe maybe just minor controversy. Minor uh, controversy. Mine. Why a 401k may not be something you should be investing into. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got some scenarios where maybe it's not the best idea to be putting all, I should say, I guess maybe, or, or right. maybe, maybe that's a better way to look at it. It's not the the only thing you should be you know, looking yeah, at. Yeah. So, yep, not yep. overly dumping uh, too much into it. So I right. want to go through some scenarios with that this week. Uh, we keep changing it around. We're trying to shake it up a little bit here with different things. I've changed my, my space. I no longer have a big mic in my face. Uh, you've got some new technology, so hope everything's uh, coming through good, but I'm sure it will be. So how how you doing, my friend? Doing great. Getting ready yeah. to, to head out of town for some camping. So it's that time of year. That's finally got it back, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a whole other story, but the, the great valve fiasco was, is finally yeah, resolved. It's, it's still not fixed, but. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Not not good at all. I said too bad. We yeah. gotta have it. I can That's I right. can make it I can make it work. So I'm I'm tired of waiting on you. Give it to me. So all right. Well let's get into this week's conversation. So again, all some right. reasons why to maybe not invest in a 401k. Um and don't get me wrong and don't get us wrong, Phil, right? It's still a great piece of uh right. of investing uh, it's a vehicle. It's a great vehicle out there, right? Mm -hmm. Um and, and depending on your age and depending on things, if it's the only thing you're doing, then keep doing it, right? You gotta pay your future self for sure, right. you know, for retirement. However, let's look at some other reasons why maybe you don't want to do it. And I think maybe the only one to consider avoiding it totally, I'm just going to start with this and I'm going to shift them around a little bit. If there's no employer matching funds, is it really worth it to be putting money into a 401k when you could be using another vehicle because you're not getting any free money? It depends on how much you want to put in. I mean, the advantage of the 401k is they've got a significantly higher limit. Okay. You know, so versus like an IRA. So IRAs this year, you can put in 65, 75 if you're over 50. You know, 401ks, okay. you can put in 30 if you're over 50. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, if, if your threshold of contribution, how much you want to put in is above the seven you can do in an IRA or Roth IRA, you know, something right. in, a, in a traditional 401k, Roth 401k. Um, then it may make sense. Maybe. Okay. Because there's no other tax deferred or tax free vehicle, traditional tax free vehicle right. that you can contribute to. Gotcha. You know, so again, there's no, with all of this, there's never a one size fits all. You no, know, this yeah, is, these are just reasons to ponder it. Yeah, these are, these are things to consider. So yeah, yeah if you don't have a, a company match, it may not make sense to contribute. Look at other options first. Okay. Um, the, the downside to the 401k is that, you're tied into it, right? So, I mean, right. if you're still employed by the employer, you're under 59 and a half, you cannot touch the money. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's definitely a consideration. If you're not getting a match, give it some, you know, second thoughts, look at other options first before you ultimately, you know, ultimately just use the 401k kind of by default. Yeah, okay. Now, for the rest of these, Phil, let's kind of go mm -hmm. with the uh, hypothetical of, let's say, Let's say you, you've got to put in um, at least 3% to get a match or, or, or 6%. Right. Let's go with 6%. I think a lot of companies are 6%. Right. Yeah. You know, five or Pretty six, typical. somewhere in that neighborhood. So let's just say you got to put in 6% and you're, and you're one of these people, you're wanting to put a lot in to save for retirement. So you're putting in 10 or 12%, right? Right. Uh, of your paycheck and, and six gets you the free money. So for the rest of these, kind of think about that as the, as the idea here. As folks, the as setup. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Kind of the setup, right? So let's go to, if you don't have an emergency fund, OK, so you're pumping right. away 12 percent of your check into the 401k every week, uh, but you only need six to get the match. Should the other six or or should, should you maybe back off that and build up your emergency fund? Because let's say you got 500 bucks in the bank and that's about it. You need more than right. that, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that is definitely a reason to maybe pair back on the 401k is to build up that emergency fund. Right. Um now, granted, if you have lost your job, and that's kind of the general thought of emergency funds is I lost sure. my job. doesn't always have to be, right? I mean, 
the roof leaks. We had crazy weather the last week. Hails, right. you know, the size of golf ball or I mean, tennis ball, softball down in <laughs> uh, Texas. You know, so if that's you and all of a sudden you're trying to get a roof replaced and, you know, you don't have the insurance proceeds yet. So you've got to replace the roof mm-hmm. um, and all your money is tied up in a 401k. Unless your 401k has a loan provision, you know, how, how are you going to get it? You can't even access the money. Yeah, true. You know, so absolutely having um, an emergency fund set up is, is something I would recommend do first. Pick up the free money, you know, build sure, up yeah, that emergency fund, yeah. then come back and revisit. OK, now I'm trying to save this 12 percent. What are my other options? Yeah. OK. All right. So that might be one reason. Another one might be if you're swimming in debt. OK. And if you're yeah. also getting closer to retirement, let's say you know, 45, 50, whatever, again, to get that 12% you're pumping in there, maybe pairing that back uh, to pay down some high interest debt, especially right now, Phil, when credit cards are what 30%. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. It's same, same kind of concept. I mean, if you're carrying high, high interest debt, you have to look at that in light of everything else. I mean, if you're, you know, because if you're paying thirty percent on a credit card and you're only right. getting, you know, whatever your four hundred one k is in the Five, market, six, right? Eight, even ten yeah. percent. I mean, if you want to go, you know, high on what it could be, right? Yeah, I mean, you're still you, you can triple that return if it, even if it was a ten percent return simply by paying off that credit card debt. So yeah, exactly. You know, so to yeah, me, that I mean, seems that, like that, a if, a, yeah. a good reason to right. Yeah, and with that, I mean. Again, you'd have to run the math to see. You may want to consider even pairing it back further because is getting the company match worth it if you're compounding, mm. you know, because a high double okay. digit interest rate like that into the teens 20% plus, I mean, that compounding effect. That's hefty. I mean, that's real hefty. Yeah, that's so a good point. You need, you need to knock that out really quick, as quick as you okay. can. All right. So, um, all right. Worried about future tax increases. Again, Mm -hmm. so now the setup would be the same thing. So we're pumping 12% into this and we're thinking, okay, the tax rates are pretty good right now. And, I, you know, they just have to go up. You know, we've talked about that a billion times on this show. So maybe it's worth it. Is it worth it, Phil, to come back to that 6% or whatever it is just to get the company match and then put the other in something like a Roth? Yeah, so definitely consider some other form of uh, tax-free type of savings. Roth uh, would be one option there. Um, so do that outside the company plan if you can first. I mean, you have more flexibility from investment options. Don't have the concern of, of money getting tied up in that 401k and not having access to it. Right. You know, again, if you're trying to get above what a Roth allows from a threshold standpoint, it may make sense to come back to the 401k, but just shift your contributions into the Roth provision in the 401k. Now, I was going to say that's a great point. If they have it and more companies say, are, yeah. Yeah, you, you've got to check your plan. Um, and that's the 401ks are this goofy uh, investment vehicle in that <laughs> right. there's all these IRS rules and, and how they work, but then there's the plan rules. Right. And even though the IRS says you can, so the IRS says you can have a Roth provision in a 401k, and they've had that for 10 or more years, 15 years. I think 2006 is when it started. I I don't think I was looking it up. Yeah. Yeah. So all these years, there are still companies that do not have a Roth provision in their 401k, and they don't have to. So, again, you got to come back to that 401k and what does the plan allow? Get what's called a summary plan description. I mean, that would be mm-hmm. my first recommendation when you're looking at the 401k is have that summary plan description because that's going to give you all the ins and outs of your company plan, what's allowed, how the match works. Do they have a Roth provision? Do they allow this in-service provisions? Do you have a loan? I mean, all these different factors. Yeah. So you need to understand how that plan works. Well, and with the passing of the Secure Act 2.0, they changed some things. I think more companies are going to continue to add it because they've made it now possible. Um, they've really, they've really enticed the uh, and pushed the envelope to to make Roth more of an option for people. Um, so we'll right. See. Well, it, now you get into the the high earners, and they're going yeah. to start forcing some of their um, their contributions into a Roth provision. You know, so they're they're almost forcing the hand of these plans to say, okay, now you have to have that Roth provision. 
Yeah. Uh, but but the upside of that, Phil, is is that you, if it's a Roth 401k, you do have the higher income limits. Uh, you can take the you know the tax. Correct. You're looking at you're being taxed, of, uh, I guess, advantageous now. Yes, you're paying it, but then right. you're growing the money tax deferred. Uh, and, and also they're allowing companies now to start making the match go to the Roth. So, again, check yeah, your plan. They, they are. And again, so this is going to be one of those rules that the, the, the company is allowed. Right. Yeah. They don't um, have to so, yet. But. So the IRS says they can. You're probably going to be two, three years at a minimum before you see any company even do it. Yeah. Um, and I, I frankly don't see a lot of companies doing it just because for them to do that, they have to include that, their contribution, their match in income to you. Mm. Good point. So the IRS wants tax on the money somewhere, right? right. And, and the, that's what it's for. The idea yeah. behind it is is they're not going to give the company a deduction for contributions that go into a tax free account. Hmm. So, so they've made it, it available, but how enticing yes. is it for your employers? Not that great, right? Because it's gonna it's gonna complicate things dramatically for the employer because now they have to include that matching contribution in your income. So just mm. consider that yourself too. Even if they do that, it's extra income you're picking up today. Okay. Okay. Good points. All right. So we're talking about, again about uh, maybe mm-hmm. reasons to not put as much or uh, max out the 401k. The 401k, right. Uh, a pretty simple one here, Phil. If you are no longer there at the company, but your money still is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, there's, if you're not at the company, you cannot participate in the 401k. Right. So don't leave your money there, right? Don't, yeah, about don't it. leave yeah. your, it's one of the reasons when you leave a company, first of all, understand what the plan is because right. not all plans do this, but some plans will limit investment options for participants that aren't there. Um, True. there's a lot of plans that will force the money out if your, your balance is below a certain threshold. So they'll send you a check. Yep. Happened to me. Yep. You know, um, so you've got to be careful of how it works and, the the bigger concern to me is really how does the beneficiary side of it work? Oh, you know, yeah. because the, you've, you've got to consider all the ins and outs on that 401k. So again, come back to understand that summary plan description, how it works. But generally, when you leave a company, you're going to want to take that 401k with you and either roll it into the new, you know, new company's 401k plan or possibly at that point, just go ahead and roll it into an IRA because right. once you've yeah. left, it's open. If you move it to an IRA, you're going to have more investment options. You're not tied into here's the 10 options or five or whatever the company offers in their 401k, mm-hmm. you know, and yep. all the other provisions that are in there. So, yeah. Uh, and, and then I'm going to wrap these final two in together, Phil, because you're starting to touch sure. on it. Plus, you touched on it earlier. I'm going to use the word control. We've talked about it before. Uh, yep. Overall, maybe a reason to not look at putting as much or maxing out, just getting the company match and then doing something else. Uh, with a 401k is about control. So if you might need yep. the money before you get to 59 and a half, you touched on that a little bit earlier, the, just the flexibility of, of the investment options, right? I mean, it's whatever the plan right. is. So there's a you know, ton of fees, right? I mean, there's lots of reasons that you may want to just look someplace else. Yeah. May, you go into it eyes wide open, understand exactly how that plan works. But the, the bottom line from a high level 401k is are more limiting in a lot of ways to you and how, how you invest. I mean, there's only a certain number of options, you know, how you access the money. I mean, there's all these different factors that you have to consider, Yeah, you know, so make sure you understand it. Um, look at other options first. You know, yeah. most people, I think by default think, Oh, I've got the company plan. I'm just going to, that's where I'll put my money. It makes it easy. Yeah. And, and that's great. I mean, and definitely easy, right? It's a payroll deducted, right. you know, all the, all the other features that go with it. I'm not saying don't do it. Understand pros and cons, but don't right. think it's the only option to have, you know, look at other options you have. Some are going to give you more control, more access. Yeah. Um, so, but I mean, on the other hand, I mean, if access is a concern to you, if you, you think you're going to be tempted to dip into that IRA that's outside the 401k, well, maybe having it locked in the 401k for you is an advantage because you can't get to it. So well, I, I don't true. know. You, yeah. you know, you know your personality, you know, but if you're working with an advisor, typically they're going to say outside just because you have better control and the advisor can help with that discussion then of, hey, bottom line is you really shouldn't be touching any money in retirement plans in general, whether it's a right. 401k or IRA pre-retirement because you're going right. to pay heavy taxes you're under 59 and a half, you're going to pay a penalty. So there's a lot of factors 
yeah. you consider. And it's, it's for your retirement, right? So your, your future self will thank you by not, for not touching that money. So again, some counterintuitive advice on the podcast this week. We'll keep it short and sweet. Just some reasons to ponder, maybe not fully going right. hog wild into the 401k. Get the match if it's offered. In most cases, it is. So that's the first really point we had probably isn't that big for many places. But if the free money's there, absolutely take the free money. But then just right. look at some other options to be maybe, uh, you know, future tax advantaged or uh, having the access or the control or shoring up that emergency fund. Just some of the things we covered this week, Phil. Right. And I mean, it, it, we didn't touch on it. I should have mentioned it in that emergency fund. There's an interesting twist with Roth IRAs. So I would, I would actually say probably fund a Roth if you can mm -hmm. and kind of consider that as an emergency fund. And, and the only reason I would say that is that Roth is one of the, the few vehicles out there that allows you Free 59 and a half, you can mm -hmm. access your principal, your contributions tax free. Okay. So I mean, you, you can go. always get your money back out if you there need you it. Go. A little tax. You know, so it, it, it might be a little trick to go ahead and fund the Roth, keep it safe, secure, even in like a money market account if you want to treat it like your emergency fund, but it's still growing tax free. Right. And if at some point you're able to build up outside money into a true emergency fund, then you can take the Roth and reallocate it and make it more of a, you know, traditional allocation for what a Roth might be. Okay. So Yeah, there you go. But, All right. So a little extra point, a little tax hack here on little the tax program. Hack. That's right. All right, folks. So thanks for hanging out. Of course, if you've got questions, as always, make sure you reach out to a qualified professional like Phil Putney, uh, who is certainly he's a CPA. So he's also a personal financial specialist. So just reach out to him at 248-888-7530. That's 248-888-7530. Now that I've said it, I just had a little brain lapse as if that was right. But it is. It is. <laughs> so I've got it memorized at this point. Uh, so find him online at philstaxhacks.com. That's philstaxhacks.com. And we'll see you next time right here on Phil's Tax Hacks and other retirement facts. Phil? Investment advisory services offered through AFS Wealth Management. The content of this program is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. Investments and or investment strategies involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment strategy will achieve its objectives.